Our featured guest tonight has had an incredible career, having been an on-air personality on The Howard Stern Show for over 15 years, headlining comedy tours, and has now started his own fantastic podcast titled The Shuley Show. Uh, here to talk about his career, The Shuley Show, and all things life and comedy, please welcome Shuley Igar. Shuley, welcome to the show. I mean, David, uh, what a nice compliment for my show. Uh, clearly, you haven't listened to an episode of it, but thank <laughs> you very much. I, I appreciate it. I'll run with that. There you go. So uh, actually, I have heard you on the Shuley show and, 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 and elsewhere talk about your parents and upbringing. And it's always yeah. hilarious when you do. Um, fill my audience in on that. Who are your parents and what were they like? Uh, my parents, we, uh, I, I'm the youngest of three boys. I was born in uh, Rishon Lezion, Israel. And uh, my, my uncle, who I'm named after, my dad's brother, uh, was killed in the Six Day War. And after that, my parents, uh, my mom really said that uh, she didn't want her kids going. She had a hunch things wouldn't mellow out there anytime soon. So uh, she told my dad, get you know i think they had like 20 30 grand to their name get the kids we're flying to the united states to los angeles and we're going to figure stuff out there and and give them a better life and a better opportunity and and they took a lot of flack for it from from family from friends um you know serving in the military is, is mandatory out there so there was you know people uh, calling her traitors and deserters and, and all kinds of stuff. And she knew she didn't care. And she, she, she made this decision. My dad agreed. And, and this is what we did. And they did it for us. And, and so we came to the States in uh, 78. So I was, I was just four years old, just turned four when we moved to the States. So you, you end up on the West coast. Yeah. And so, and it's interesting because, you know, you just left New York city and came to Alabama, yeah. Essentially for your family too, no? It's 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 funny. We didn't realize it till after we kind of got here. But you know, we were living in New York. Uh, I was working in New York for 15 years for the Howard Stern Show, um, uh, on-air correspondent, writer, producer, whatever they needed. I was there for it. And uh, then the pandemic hit, and we start working from home. And then you start realizing what your home is now that you're in it for more than, you know, a couple hours uh, a, a day. And we're in this small, you know, two bedroom, two bath apartment. It's it's my wife. It's my two girls, uh, a dog, three cats, way too many humans in one small space. And now we're we're trapped there. You know, we're under quarantine. We're, we're not going anywhere. And uh, it, you know, the good that came from it was that I reconnected with my family again, something that I I definitely put them on the back burner when it came to the career and, and the job and and always being available for whatever they needed. But whatever my family needed, I was not I they just weren't on my list. And when they became number one on my list at the same time, our neighborhood completely changed overnight for for the bad it wasn't a place to raise kids there anymore two little girls in my opinion and uh we started looking to see where we could move and and everywhere in the east coast area pretty much financially puts us in the same spot and uh, i have a good friend of mine who's in real estate out here who for years have been has been telling me to just buy land in uh one particular spot huntsville alabama he says it's uh, it's going to be the next Nashville, going to be the next Austin. And uh, it's and people from Alabama will tell you, they say there's Huntsville and then there's Alabama. It's it's, you know, people got teeth here. Uh, it's uh, it's great. No, no, well, you've got you've and, and the funny thing is, is you'll see cars uh, with bumper stickers on them that say, as a matter of fact, I am a rocket scientist. Uh, you know, it's so funny. I'm surrounded by and that's the funny thing, right? Like before this pandemic, the, the, the only thing I knew about the South is all the jokes we know about the South, right? All the pre preconceived stere stereotypical crap that we've heard throughout the years. If you don't see any different, then that's what you think it is, right? And in the summertime, we said, look, we found a place we really want. We, we saw what we could afford out here what we could get for what we're paying in new york and uh we just said okay well let's go out there at least and see 
what this place is all about because you know it could be the nicest house in the world if the people stink then it's it's a no go so we came out here and and i mean it was just night and day it was like everybody everybody was so well mannered everybody was so polite everybody was so welcoming to us nobody asked us where we were from what we were doing here who we voted for what do we think people were wearing masks it wasn't the wild west where you know people are coughing in each other's faces people are following rules and per capita huntsville has some of the smartest and uh uh most well-trained human beings uh in the south i mean they they I'm surrounded by people who work for Department of Defense and, and you know, do some I can't even say where they work. You know, like it's it's crazy. Everybody here is is uh, bringing something to the table, which I like. You you see the kids mowing the lawns on the weekends. Everybody does their part. And uh, and, and it's nice. It's nice when New York, you just keep your head down and you keep moving. You know, it's funny you, because, you know, people who aren't, I, I grew up in upstate New York in Woodstock. Mm-hmm, right. And it's funny how every people who aren't from New York and have never been to New York think the entire state is New York City. Like it's all right. big buildings and that it's all people being rude and people pe- not having time for anything. And, and, you know, the old New York minute th- rule and everybody up north thinks that everybody down here are a bunch of country bumpkins. Correct. And, and so it's funny when you actually, when people get to see the other areas and say, hey, wait a minute. No, no, no. It, the, you got some stereotypes. And yeah, there are definitely people who fit those stereotypes. There's a reason why those stereotypes exist. Absolutely. They started somewhere. Listen, you know? I tell people no matter what state you live in, if you drive far enough, you'll find it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You'll you'll find it. Uh, it's, I'm not saying all of Alabama is, you know, this this secular dream, you know, utopia that, I mean, look, man, that what's great is, you know, I can make all the Jewish jokes I want because they don't even know Jews out here. They just, they just think I'm another white guy. So it's, I tell them all the time. I go, you people are so sweet. You don't even know you're supposed to hate us. I love that. God bless you guys. So, you know, let's talk about comedy for a little bit. So who were some of the first comedians who made an impression on you and how did you come across them? Uh, well, uh, probably I think the first comedy special I ever remember seeing was an HBO comedy special, Howie Mandel live in Chicago. And I just remember how wild he was on stage. I remember him doing crowd work and talking to people, which as a comic now and knowing specials and having done a special you don't do crowd work in your special really right like your special is your your best hour that you've been polishing for the last you know six months to a year and that's your special or longer longer. sure and and that's your special well he was doing stuff bringing people from the audience on the stage i remember a woman going to the bathroom and and as soon as she walked out of the uh arena he just said okay He goes, this row, switch with that row. And he made these two rows switch where when she walked back, she was just standing there looking and wondering, I know this is where my seat is, but none of the people that were in my row are in this row now. And she's confused and he's in the middle of a bit. He just stops. He's like, ma'am, can you please sit down? You know, and now he's doing a bit for himself on his own special, which that always stood out to me. Uh, Don Rickles. Uh, I used to stay up to watch him come on the Johnny Carson show because I loved watching Carson when Rickles was on because Johnny would just lose control. Like he had no control of his show anymore. And Rickles just took over. It was like having Robin Williams on a show. Correct. And, And Carson, the other thing I loved, which is what I really try to focus on with my show is he would do these bits, these sketches that would start bombing and he would lean into the sketch bombing and he would make jokes. And and so that organic, in the moment comedy is what I grew up watching. And that's that's what I love more than anything is just hitting a home run on a pitch that just came out. You know, it's coming at you. It's the first time you've seen this picture and you swing and you, and you crank it. Like that for me as a comic is such a great feeling. So those are the type of comics that stood out for me. And then, you know, guys like Bill Hicks would would 
I would listen to his albums and then and it, it'd be two or three bits on the album where I just hit my head and go, oh, it's right there. Like, how did I not think of that? Like, you know, they, those things I love uh, dice as as a young guy hearing somebody talking like that on the album was insane. Kennison, uh, Sam Kennison. Sam, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, for me, it was what stood out for me, what I know now about these guys that I grew up loving as a comic is that they all loved doing this. There's a lot of comics that make a lot of money that hate this gig. They're burnt out. They're like TSA agents, right? They just don't want to be there anymore. And and then you meet comics that, you know, Howie Mandel, years later, I get to work with him and, you know, we're we're doing a show in in uh, Caesars, Ontario. I think it was like 8,000 people at our show. And then after the show, they said, uh, they come backstage and they go, Mr. Mandel, REO Speedwagon and Chicago are doing a show in the arena here. And they requested if you want to come by and watch. And, and he's like, yeah. And as they're taking us under this hotel to this other venue to see the show, he looks at me, guy's been doing it 40 years, looks at me and goes, can you believe we get paid to do this? And that to me, that's everything. Cause I'm like, man, if you're still digging it, like there's hope, you know, because you meet a lot of people who don't. So that, that, that I really like.